So, firstly, why do we do cardio? For the obvious reasons of, of health benefits, and I train, or have trained, especially the past year, for aesthetic purposes, to build muscle, to build strength. But obviously one of the most important muscles of the body, as always, is the heart. So I've been doing a lot of cardio, not so much running, over the past three months, more predominantly to do with weight loss. And that is all in order to create an energy deficit. And basics of an energy deficit are, is that we are expending more energy than we're consuming, which puts us into an energy deficit, or i.e. a calorie deficit, so that therefore we can lose fat. However, the reason why I'm starting to incorporate more running now is just due to an enjoyment element, not, nothing to do with really fat loss or performance. Because sometimes what happens is when we put so much emphasis on, for example, cardio or running, dictating an outcome, we turn it into a chore rather than something that we enjoy. And the big thing with running is we get that runner's feel. And we don't want that feel to be replaced with a need. So do you need to do cardio? Absolutely not. Is it advantageous to do so? I'd say so, yeah. Because like we discussed, if weight loss is the goal, you can get this done through what well, diet or even just steps. And that's all dependent on the individual and what their goal is. So for example, what I do with a lot of clients, because most of my clients are particularly fat loss clients or members, is that we will create an energy deficit, remember that one, through the nutrition alone, not eating like a dick and getting some steps in. Generally 10K steps a day is a good starting point. So why at this point then through this journey so far, am I starting to run? I think the main thing for me and coming through this whole journey of eating disorder, focusing on building calories up, coming back into this first cut since, which has been very successful. The big thing for me with health and fitness is more so the mental side. I think through running, I almost tap into something different that I don't get through other parts of training, specifically cardio. And sometimes even weight training, although I do enjoy that a lot more, it's just something about running, which is pretty sick to a certain degree, when it's not pushed too far. Because what I've been doing with cardio over the last couple of months is obviously for it to be composition based. So all I've been doing is doing like elliptical or bike or particularly Stairmaster and doing about 30 minutes twice per week, 130 beats per minute. So that I'm able to recover in aid of my weight sessions being a lot better. So generally, I never usually run or do any cardio on a treadmill. Just because pretty much I find it boring as fuck. That's why I prefer to outdoors, a bit more stimulus. Like I said before, when you're running in places where you've not been before, or you don't know, often time tends to go a lot quicker as well. Also in simple terms, when we look at body composition, cardio, shrink the body, weight training, build up the body. So when I'm running, like I said, I'm not running to burn calories or to lose weight, I'm running for multiple, a plethora of other reasons. When I'm doing cardio in the gym, usually it's gonna be through body composition. I'm looking to, to expend calories or burn energy in order to create a bigger energy deficit so therefore I can burn fat. So, usually when I'll do cardio in the gym, I won't choose a treadmill because like I said, it's boring. And also I find that the Stairmaster is a far more efficient way to burn through calories and get my heart rate up to around 130 beats per minute, which is where I'll try and keep cardio when I'm doing it for fat loss, because what we're looking at is to get that balance between stimulus and fatigability. And sometimes running, it can create a lot of fatigue and be hard to recover from. Which brings us into the sort of main chunk of the video, mate, which is gonna be running and muscle loss. And do you lose your gains if you start running? So firstly, running can actually be of benefit to building tissue when done properly, as it can be a help to endurance and recovery. So when we look at hypertrophy rep ranges, although most people tend to think it's a 10 to 12 rep range, it's not. It can be done anywhere between the six to 30 rep range, although when we get up to those higher numbers, it can be more difficult. Why? It can be advantageous to incorporate some cardiovascular fitness or running. However, it also can be a disadvantage. If you do running or enter the cardio like an absolute tool, 
It's been shown that if we do cardio or implement running incorrectly into our program, that we can impair muscle growth by up to a third. So it isn't so much that cardio is going to destroy your gains or melt muscle or make you smaller. It's a case of that it can impair the rate at which we're able to build muscle tissue if it's not done properly. The other thing that's going to directly impact is our ability to recover. So we've got to get this, we've got to get this kind of synergy, we'll call it synergy, between stimulus and fatigue. So obviously running is quite high fatigue ability. So we've got to look at it in regards to how much it's going to impact our strength, because if it impacts our strength, we're not then able, able to progressively overload training, which is the main component, component for us to be able to build muscle. And basically it just makes getting big impossible, which is still something that I want to be. So just three little golden rules that I'm going to be applying for when I'm doing running and something that you can apply to running if you still want to build muscle or you still want to be big or you want to get big, but also just want to run. So first one's going to be run post weights. No point in doing all your running and then going in for a weight session if your goal is to still build muscle because we're going to we're going to completely fuck ourselves over. You're going to have no energy to lift. It's going to affect your strength. And it's also going to deplenish your glycogen cells, which is what we need when we're going for a lift. Number two, when we are running, i.e. doing higher impact exercise, it's best to split these up. So for example, at the moment, I'm going to be doing my weight training first thing in the morning, just because that is my main focus. I, I, I want to run, love running, but it's not my main focus. Building muscle tissue, looking good is still my main focus. So get in and done that, get that done first and prioritize the things that I want to prioritize, mate. Just as simple as that. And I'll go running a little bit later on the day, potentially when it's got a bit cooler, because it's actually for once, touch wood, it's actually quite warm in the UK. So I'll go for run a little bit later on once I've got some food in me and just enjoy it. Number three is going to be run easy, or at least run your easy runs easy. So not every single run is going to be like the one, one of the screenshots will pop up. Pop up where I went health level on the 5K and tried to push the boundaries. Some of the runs, I'm just gonna be looking at keeping like 150 beats per minute or below. Just so that, again, with the fatigability, I'm not running myself into the ground, unable to recover and get in for a weight session the next day. So not all runs need to be your best five or 10K. Exactly the same when we look at other performance athletes, not every single session they're going in doing one RMs or trying to hit PBs, trying to the biggest bench press, the biggest squat, because you can't recover in time. So sometimes you've got to pull back a little bit and for me, enjoy it. Oh, run done. So the thing that I spoke about previously was the amount of running you're doing, potential injury. So that runner pretty much kept under 150 beats per minute. And that's because I just don't want to tax myself. Like, keep the easy runs easy. The, the thing with, can you still build muscle and run? As a general guideline, yes. You don't really want to be running more than three times per week over 30 minutes if your goal is to be more of a hybrid and build as much tissue as possible, which is still what my goal is. General guidelines. But if you're a bodybuilder or you're in it for fat loss and you're just not asked, that's fine. The thing that we want to remember is that I'm not a die-hard runner still pretty much a bodybuilder who just enjoys running and I'll still do it just to enjoy it. 198 pounds, still looking to build tissue, I just want to enjoy running a little bit. The thing is for me when I compare my ethos from running from where it used to be to where it is now it's completely changed because I used to just run based on a binge or overeating and just to try and expend calories whereas now I pretty much just run to enjoy it. So to conclude, yes you still can build muscle, it's not going to melt away muscle doing running Will your muscle building journey be slower if you're doing running? Probably yes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a massive like and a thumbs up because it helps me and push it out to YouTube and loads of other people. If you're not subscribed, what the fuck are you doing? Make sure you hit that little red button, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified for the next video that's coming out. I'll catch you next time.